Hello friends. Today in the session, we are going to discuss about the coordination compound, actually the bonding in coordination compound. Okay. So there are various theories which, you know, explains the bonding of coordination compound, right? The theory we are going to discuss today is valence bond theory, right? Valence bond theory, valence bond theory, which in short, we also call it as VBT, right? Valence bond theory, okay? See, this theory is almost similar to the theory that we have discussed in chemical bonding, valence bond theory. We have also already those things are here also that number of atomic orbital combines and gives equal number of hybrid orbital and all. All those things are same. Even the postulates of this theory, few points are very uh, similar or same, right? Two, three points we have difference here that we are going to discuss here, right? This valence bond theory is given by Pauling, right? And this theory, this theory mainly deals with this theory. Uh, it mainly deals with. It mainly deals with the geometry geometry and magnetic properties, right? Geometry and magnetic property of the complexes. Of the complexes okay so for geometry we must know the hybridization of the complex right magnetic property means what whether it is diamagnetic or paramagnetic that is what the magnetic property we have paramagnetic or diamagnetic so these two informations we will get with this valence bond theory okay the main postulates of this theory are the important points of this theory are the first point you should know all these points because the you know the bonding and all we are going to discuss based on these postulates only okay so so the first point here is the central metal atom, the first point, the central metal atom, CMA. This is the abbreviation we are going to use for this term, central metal atom. The central metal atom loses a required number of required number of electrons number of electrons to form ion to form ion and these numbers are nothing but the valency of the cation right so to form an ion which is generally a cation Second postulate is what? The second postulate is depending upon the coordination number depending upon the coordination number the central metal hat atom coordination number the central metal atom cma has 
इक्वल नंबर ऑफ इक्वल नंबर ऑफ वेकेंट एस पी एंड डी ऑर्बिटल एस पी एंड डी ऑर्बिटल्स which forms which forms hybrid which forms hybrid orbitals which forms hybrid orbitals right and the other thing is what the number of hybrid orbitals in this only i'll write down here the number of hybrid or orbitals orbitals form is equals to the number of atomic orbitals the number of atomic orbitals combines okay the number of hybrid orbital forms is equals to the number of atomic orbital combines okay third one is third one is in case of strong ligand in case of a strong ligand in case of strong ligand there may be there may be there may be rearrangement rearrangement of electrons in the atomic orbital in the atomic orbitals against the huns rule against the huns rule against the huns rule huns rule rearrangement is also possible okay this is the next point okay next point is the fourth one the ligand attached with attached with the central metal atom with coordinate bond coordinate bond has considerable amount amount of polarity as considerable amount of polarity fourth point is this and the fifth point if the complex if the complex contains unpaired electron unpaired electron then it is paramagnetic if all the electrons all the electrons are 
paired then diamagnetic then diamagnetic okay so these are the postulates we have of valence bond theory the most important postulate is this one in case of strong ligand there may be rearrangement of electrons in the atomic orbitals against the huns rule okay and this paramagnetic diamagnetic we already know and this thing is number of hybrid orbital forms correct right? most important point is the third point now we'll see uh, the explanation of this one more thing we should know here one more thing we should know is i'll draw a table here like uh, the first thing is uh, coordination number coordination number then second thing i'll write down here is geometry and the last one is hybridization hybridization coordination number can be 2 and 6 these are the coordination number okay so we'll draw a table here okay if the coordination number is 2 then the geometry of the molecule is linear and hybridization is sp coordination number is 3 then it is trigonal planar trigonal planar and hybridization is sp2 four it is either tetrahedral or square planar tetrahedral means sp3 hybridization square planar means dsp2 hybridization five it means trigonal bipyramidal trigonal bipyramidal or we can also have square pyramidal trigonal bipyramidal or square pyramidal sixth one is uh, we can have a uh, octahedral or square by pyramidal okay trigonal by pyramidal hybridization can be or uh, dsp3 or it can be sp3d this one it can be sp3 d2 or d2 sp3 any of these two hybridization is possible for these geometries okay few more things um, we should know here and that is uh, trigonal bipyramidal structure if you see it is uh, this is a triangle okay so we'll have metal here in the center of this and this gives you this gives you one ligand here and one ligand here right all these three corners we have ligand here we have ligand here we have ligand and here we have ligand okay so this one is nothing but the trigonal bipyramidal structure the base is a triangle and this forms a bipyramid this 
this no even this also the three dimensional figure so it's very difficult to you know show here in this uh, thing we have here also here also right this triangle comes. is trigonal bipyramidal this structure is trigonal bipyramidal t b p triangle is the base and bipyramidal top and bottom it is trigonal bipyramidal structure okay in this what happens this is metal here here we have the metal and these are ligands okay all these are ligands attached with the metal correct so in this the three bond length three bond length are same and two bond length are different different means this bond length of ligand and metal this bond length this bond length different and these three bond lengths are same okay similarly when you consider a square uh, pyramidal or a square by pyramidal first of all i'll show you what is a square uh, pyramidal a square pyramidal is something like this right we have a square and on the center of it here is the metal we have and the corner of the square contains ligands. This is ligand, this is ligand, this is ligand, this is ligand. Right? And all these ligands are bonded with the metal with coordination bond, coordinate bond, sorry. With this coordinate bond. Pyramidal, if you talk about is square pyramidal, the base is a square, and only one ligand is attached from the top or from the bottom, like this. One ligand is here, right? This is square, square, pyramidal, right? Because these are, you know, this is the base is the square, and this is actually a pyramid. If you try to, you know, imagine this a geometry, three dimensional. Imagine if you do, this forms a. a Pyramid, right? Square is the base and a pyramid. It is a square pyramidal. Bipyramidal means what? I'll explain here only what is bipyramidal. One ligand is attached with the metal from the bottom of it, like this. This is a ligand we have. Right? So now this ligand is also attached with every corner of the square, like this. this one. Right? So this is a square bipyramidal, right? So in this, the two bond length are different and four bond length are same. Bond length of bond length bond length of metal and ligand. Bond length of metal and ligand. This information we must have. Okay. Now you see how to find out the geometry and uh, you know uh, the other magnetic properties of the metal. Okay, so that we are going to discuss next.